If you look online and see some chord charts, you'll see quite often chord markings like this, maybe F, B flat, G minor, E flat. In that case, the instruction is that everybody plays a group of notes that are based on those triads, but really importantly, the bass player and the left hand of the keyboard will play the root note of each of these. But, you know, a change is as good as a holiday sometimes, and if we get a little bit tired or limited by the bass instruments always playing these root notes, we create some different versions of the chords, and you might have seen a forward slash used. What that means, ah, okay, the band is playing a combination of F major triad notes, but the bass notes, particularly the bass guitar and the left hand, if there's a keyboard player, will be playing an A, and that makes the chord of F major over A. In the same way, we could take our G minor and we could make it over its B flat, which used to be its middle note, but now it's going to be the lowest sound that we hear. Uh, we could take the top note of the G minor, which is the D, and make that the bass note. So you see, everybody has a lot of flexibility here with how they voice the chord. And some guitar chords may sound better further up the neck, and then others might sound great in their context right down the bottom of the neck. But where the bass sounds in relation to the chord that everybody is making together creates what we call an inversion. So let's have a look over here at our F major scale. And I'll just find an F. La. So we've got one or root, and I've actually deliberately called that root, and you'll see why in a moment. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now if we make an F major triad out of that, we're going to take note one, note three, and note five. So you'll see them up here, and let's listen to how they sound. Now in this case, we're going to start to be attentive to which is the lowest sounding note. Well in this arrangement of an F major triad, this here is an F, which is the root note of the home scale. So this triad is called in root position. So the root is just like the root of a tree, it's right at the bottom of the tree. What about this though? Again, these are the notes from bottom to top, A, C, and F. So it is actually an F major triad, because those are our notes, F, A, and C, but we've changed the order of them. Now the middle note, the A, is the lowest sounding, and then we go to note 5 of F major, and then we go up to the root, which is just a higher octave of that F. So because the th third of the scale, note 3, is now the bass note, that's the first way that we might mix up the structure of this chord, and so this becomes known as F major in first inversion. F major in the first inversion. Over here, reading from bottom to top, I've got C, then F, then A. Again, that's the notes F, A, C. But in this case, note 5 is now the lowest sounding note in this combination which makes F major. And if that is the case, I have made F major second inversion because that's the second way that we might mix up the structure of the triad just to give us a different sound. Now most of our triads that we hear in popular music are in root position, but first inversion triads and second inversion triads are fantastic colour choices, just when the bass is feeling a little bit trapped on the root notes. 
So if we see a triad like down here, let's reverse this process and figure out what is going on. I haven't started with a stack. As you see, I've got space and then space and then line. Now the first thing I have to do, and it kind of rhymes, if it ain't stack, go back. This ain't stack because I haven't got a space, 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 or line, line, line pattern. And that's what I need to decide what the triad is. So I'm going to make the minimal changes required to make a stack. And I can see visually, if I was to drop this D down an octave, I would have space, 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 which means I've got a stack. So I'll do that now. Put my D at the bottom, then my F sharp, then my A. Now I can use any of the techniques for analysing the triad to figure out what that is. This here is a D major triad. So that is how I figure out what triad this is making, but then I need to go back to the way that it was given to me, because remember this root position triad is just my working. It's just for me to work out what triad we're talking about when we combine these notes. Now when we look at what position it's in, what inversion it's in, I can see that note 3 of the scale is the lowest sounding note. So this is D major, or I can even just call it D for short, because D always defaults to D major. And because the third of the root position version is the lowest sounding note in this combination of it, we are in first inversion. So that's D major first inversion. How about this one down here? I've got a low B and then an E and then G. So that is not a stack because I've got something on a space and then I've got a line and then a line. So I'm going to make one change hopefully to get it all into a stack and I'm going to lift this B up so that I have line, line and then the B goes on top. Now that I've got a stack, I can do my measurements and I can name this triad based on what the root note is. So now I've got a stack, I can call it E minor in root position, EM for short. So now I go back and I say, well, which was the lowest note? The B was given to me as the lowest note. That, in the root position version, is the top note, the fifth of the triad. If the fifth is now the bass note, we are in second inversion. So you can see that I can invert majors, I can invert minors, and the same applies to dims and orcs. So I can create inversions of them just to give more colourful options for the bass.